uh, well, right now I can't resist saying <laughs> the looking at presidential politics, we just went through the election, Donald Trump was elected using exactly the t same techniques of appeal to the people and popular values and claiming to be the single voice of the people that Gaius Marius and all the tribunes, the Gracchi, the brothers, a little before Marius in fact, Julius Caesar, uh, these are techniques that, that work in Republican with a small r politics and in, in that historical knowledge that I happen to have has given me, I think, a better sense of how to think about uh, the phenomenon of President Trump uh, and, and how, to, how to think about paths forward for us. Uh, the problem the Romans failed to solve, if you think of uh, the, the senatorial politics that these, these powerful individual men displaced was how to talk to one another and how to talk to the people. They got so entrenched in their, and you could even say addicted to their wealth and their traditional authority, they lost the interest, ability, desire um, to think innovatively about what re Republican with a smaller politics could be, and they lost the you know connection with popular interests that had never worked, you know, like. A, like a democracy in, in the Roman context, but it had provided social glue that, and a certain level of social trust that kept the empire working in the generations before. So I can't resist saying that because that I think about that historical example a lot these days. When I was in high school, I, and even a little bit, actually maybe a lot earlier, maybe as early as fourth or fifth grade, uh, I found myself frustrated, as I think a lot of girls do, with the absence of, of female role models in you know, everything from movies to, to the real world. And in an interesting way, uh, classical, you know, the Greek and Roman experience, as, insofar as I understood it at that time, helped explain that and um, I don't know, give it some historical, I mean, I, I think I understood patterns of, of sexism and, and by extension, ultimately, prejudices of all kinds, because I could see in my interest in this ancient world that the same systems were in place, you know, and the same ideas about how, how women are flighty or, and not to be relied on and not sources of authority, uh, you know, and all the other values connected with masculinity that are more positive, uh, knowing that 2,000, 2,500 years ago there was a whole body of people and a whole body of texts who, who believed these things um, helped me make sense of the, the patterns of prejudice and the hierarchies that we build in our own world. Uh, but for reasons I realize I don't understand even as I say this, <laughs> um, it, because it was, a, it was historical knowledge, like I knew these people had really existed 2,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, it kind of contained uh, the power of hierarchies because, in, in my own head, because I think I made a connection pretty early on sustained by good feminist teachers and, um, and by family support and, and lots of other things. I was able to sustain the idea that things could be different. So knowing that there was like there were historical roots that we could understand and think critically about in the ancient world that that had shaped patterns of prejudice that persisted now, kind of paradoxically for me, suggested that we could find our way out of that. Mm. That you know history isn't destiny. 